Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, family. This is Eliyahu Malak ben Yehuda. And we are the Great Awakening. And um, our ministry, we're here to give clarity to our purpose as an identity as Yah's chosen people. We're here to give insight to the heart of Yah's purpose. And we deal primarily with four main topics. There's spiritual warfare, prayer, healing and deliverance, prophecy, dreams, and dream interpretation. So I know it's been quite a while. I do want to apologize. I've been having some technical difficulties uh, dealing with my audio. Um, uh, we're going to get into a message um, today that I originally wanted to do during Passover because of the technical difficulties. I wasn't able to do it, but nonetheless, uh, I know it will be a, still be a blessing. And um, I just want to say I thank everyone for their emails, all you who've been emailing. I thank you for your emails and your support. We truly thank you, me and my wife. We, um, those of you who who have gave and who've been giving, I mean, it really has meant a lot. It really has. I mean, that's you know, I know it sounds cliche, but I we can't even express how much uh, that meant to us. And we 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 thank you for all those who, who who've been emailing um, with certain suggestions and even dream interpretations. Uh, we we do see them. We have not forgotten about you, um, but we I have to do how the Most High is leading me. But we are going to get to those things. Um, we're going to go into some dream interpretations and things of that nature, but uh, not so much as me just interpreting your dreams. But what I want to do is to empower you because there's some symbology, symbologies, uh, or symbols and dreams that you can just point out. And um, instead of just giving you a fish, I'm going to teach you how to fish. I'm going to empower you. And we are going to give out um, some power, some prayer points concerning um, different things. And I know uh, if those of you have been looking at the website, we're a little bit backed up, but we will get to those things. But I do want to let you know that we, we, we have been seeing the emails and we, um, we, we do um, thank you. For the dreams and the different things that you've been sending and we will get back to you we will get with you i'm um, just be on the lookout for um for certain videos and um we may we'll we will have uh some of your dreams some of the symbols and some of the things um as time goes along but without further ado i do want to talk about um we're going to talk about passover all right but this is the season of liberation. And we're going to look at the subtopic is looking into deceptive powers. Because as we know, this is a season, um, as far as we know, it's a new year. It's a new beginning. It's a season of liberation. But it's also a season of judgment. And it's also, I do feel that as this season, this time that we're in, that it's a particular shift. Some things are happening. And I know that. That sounds cliche, but truly we, we can see all over the world that there's certain things that are on the rise and the Most High is truly moving uh, us in a positive direction. He's really setting setting the stage and we have to be mindful. We have to be alert. And we have to have our eyes upon what he's doing and not be distracted by what Hasatan is doing and what people are doing and what we perceive them to be doing. All right, we just got to keep continue to uh, press towards the mark and keep our eyes upon the heels for which come with our help because we know that our help comes from you. Amen. So we're going to get into what is Passover um, and look in, inside the powers that are behind Passover. Some of the things that happened during this time as our as our forefathers was coming out of the land of Mizraim. So uh, we're going to look. It's going to be a different spin to it. And um, it's not going to be nothing deep, uh, but we're just going to look into some of the, the 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 things that were going on. What are the powers? I know many of you have looked and have seen um, the evil altars. So we're going to deal with some of the deceptive powers that um that we most mostly hear of now. But I'm going to relate it back in what we call what they call the Old Testament or in the in this time. So. Without further ado, we're going to go to the next slide. The next slide is uh, the spiritual deception. All right. This is 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 4. 
It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of Elohim. Now, this scripture, these scriptures, this scripture here, these are the characteristics of those that will be orchestrating the spiritual deception. All right. And you won't be able to see these things on the on the surface. That's the th that's that's one of the things about a deception is it's it's in its intent is to deceive. A lot of people a lot of times we feel that we will we'll be able to pick up on certain things. But the Bible talks about how there are going to be false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You're not going to be able to see these characteristics on the surface level. These are going to be the fruits, the things that are hidden deep down inside these inside these individuals. And it's going to take the Ruach. It's going to take the Ruach HaKodesh for you to be able to discern these things. And we're going to go in further than how they are operating and how they operate even in the world today. All right. Again, it says having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. From such turn away. It says for, for of this sort are they which creep in houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lust. Now let's stop here. These people have a form of Elohim. But they deny the power of Elohim. Now, just because it says they deny the power, it doesn't mean that they're not working with an, a power source. Because in order to have a deception and to, and to manipulate people, you have to have some type of, of power. It's just, not, uh, uh, it's just not from Elohim. It's a form of what looks uh, like Elohim. It's a form of godliness, but it denies the true Ruach. But they're operating from an evil Ruach. All right. They're denying the Ruach HaKodesh, but they are operating in another power. All right. So we need to understand this because this ministry, we're here to warn you not of just the witches and the and the wizards and the warlocks and the, the ghosts and the goblins and the and the and all these these things that we see um just overtly as we know as Luciferian or satanic or demonic. But we're here to show you the things that how the Bible talks about even the very elect would be deceived if it were possible. All right. There's going to be some things and that, that is coming on the scene even now that is so manipulative and so deceptive that it only if you do not have the Ruach HaKodesh and be mature in it and be sound in what you know the Most High is saying. You will be deceived. The only way the very elect was not going to be deceived is because they're going to learn and know how to hear the most high voice. He said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. He didn't say my sheep will see my signs. My sheep will uh, uh, follow my footsteps. He was talking about my sheep will hear my voice because the most high he is Ruach. He is spirit. We, not, we need to understand his voice and how he's speaking, because this verse says these men, these sorts are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust. That reminds me of Eve. Oh, well, who we call Eve. How she was how she was led away deceptively through cunning craftiness, through through listening to the mo to the, um to Hasatan. Okay? She got knowledge from Hasatan that she was not supposed to get and was not uh, uh legalized by the most high. And it says forever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Now let's look at the this is a touch tone 
uh, of the message. Verse 8. It says, Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as there also was. Now let's look at this. Who 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 is Janus and Jambres? And how did they withstand Moses in the day of Israel? How what who are these people? All right. Now Janus and Jambres, these are the two names that were given to the magicians that were in the time of Egypt that was opposing Moses at that time. These were the names that was get, that was given to them. And it says that they uh, resisted the truth. And I believe in another ver version, it says that they concealed the truth. That's how they did it, through concealing it. And they were men of corrupt minds. They was reprobated. So now, so what does it mean to conceal something? To conceal means to hide, to withdraw or remove from observation. It's to cover up or remove from observation. It's to cover up or keep from sight. So we're going to look into how did Janus and Jambres conceal the truth? How, what did they do to try to divert the children of Israel from believing in the Most High? What did they do and how did they do it? All right. Like I said, we just, it's not going to be, um, this ain't going to be some deep thing. We're just going to, going to look at some scriptures. All right. All right. Let's look at this. This is Moshe given power. It's Exodus 4, 1 through 5. It says, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, Yahuwah hath not appeared unto thee. And Yahuwah said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. Now this is the call that Moshe was given. Moshe was given power. Like I said, if you remember in the in the I know many of you seen the video concerning evil altars and it started how I talked about how uh, we need power. Every mighty man, every mighty woman, every servant, every handmaiden before they were sent out, they were given power. I cannot stress that enough. They were given something. They were confirmed something. The Bible says it like this. He says that um, the this is what Yahushua said. He says that the harvest is plenteous, but the labor or the laborers are few. But he says you need to pray to the master of the of the harvest so that he may send laborers into the vineyard. You cannot go into the vineyard and start plucking out what you feel that needs to be plucked out. Only the master, only Yahuwah can go. And, and and do what needs to be done properly. If you go out on your own, you will face difficulties. You will face, um, I'm telling you, you will face um, truly difficulties, demonic, spiritual things, because you were not sent. You were not commissioned. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, I know this through experience. You have to, you have to have the, the, the Most High, if he's not with you, th those that build the house, if, if the Most High is not with you, you're building in vain, all right? You will get beat up. You will get beat up on, okay? All right. So this is this is him getting power. And what did he do? He The Most High gave him a sign to show the children of Israel um, so that they may believe, all right? Let's go to the next slide. 
because even this, I, let me let me say this, let me say this, because even because Moshe was called and he was chosen, but do you remember when he was forty years of age? When he was forty years of age, he saw a man uh, that was being beat up on one of his brethren by an Egyptian. And he got so mad that he killed that man. And then a few days later, he came, he saw some of his brethren. They was arguing with each other. And they, he said, why y'all arguing? Y'all shouldn't be arguing like this. Y'all are brothers. And they looked at him and said, who are you? Who made you a prince of us? Who made you a judge of us? Are you going to kill us like you killed that Egyptian? Now, in Moses' mind, he, he, he felt that, hey, I'm in a place or I can deliver you out of your situation. And he took that zeal that he had for the love of his people and his brethren. And he took things into his own hands. But it wasn't his time yet. He wasn't commissioned to do it yet. The Most High had not given him the okay to do what he was called to do. Or what he was preserved to do. So what happened was, is that since he, he, was, he, he jumped before the time, he... Fear came in and then he fled the place where he was supposed to be delivering his people. He fled the whole 40 years until he was called by the most high. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm that's why I say it is very important that you that you study this, show yourself approved, that you that you spend time with the most high, that you get an understanding of your call to make your calling and election sure before you go forth. Because without the most high, all that you're doing is going to be in vain. Everything you everything that you're you're doing, there's 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 levels to this, there's there's order to this, there's some understanding to this. Alright, let's keep going. Alright, Exodus 4, 6 and 9 says, And Yahuwah said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And, and he his hand, and he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, Neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon thy dry land. Now it's important that the Most High gave Moshe these signs so that Israel could, would believe. And also it was, it was also to expose something. And we're going to get into the what what it was, um, why these signs were needed and what they exposed, all right, concerning Janus and Jambres, or the magicians, the Egyptian magicians, all right? All right, so these are the signs and wonders. Exodus 4, 28 through 31, it says, And Moses told Aaron all the words that Yahuwah had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moshe and Aaron went and gathered together all the leaders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all the words which Yahuwah had spoken unto Moshe and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that Yahuwah had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their afflictions, then they bowed their heads and worshiped. Now, this is the first thing why these signs needed to, um, that the Most High had to give these signs so that the children of Israel would believe. And look how they looked at their attitude. They bowed down. They worshiped. They were in rejoicing. They were joyful that the Most High looked upon their affliction. All right. It was important. All right. All right. Let's keep going. All right. So this is when Moshe confronting, when he confronted Pharaoh. All right. Exodus 5, 1 through 4 says, And afterward, Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, 
Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahuwah that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not Yahuwah, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The Elohim of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us go, we pray, three days' journey into the desert and sacrifice unto Yahuwah our Elohim lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, do ye Moses, or Moshe, and Aaron let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? So we all know the story. Basically, he said, Nah. And he said, And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. Ye should no more give the people straw to make brick, or hence or here, heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. But he said, ye are idle, ye are idle. Therefore, ye say, let us go and do sacrifice unto Yahuwah. And they met Moshe and Aaron. These are the children of Israel who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto him, Yahuwah, look upon you and judge you because you have made, a, made our savior to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh. And in the eyes of his servant to put a sword in their hands to slay us. Now, I, I, we spoke about this previously. This, was, this reminds me of the evil altars. When you are going, you are anointed or you're appointed to speak truth. That truth, because you're dealing with not just people, you're dealing with a spiritual realm. Things are going to get worse before they get better. And there's powers that are operating and orchestrating things and getting to people's minds and their belief system. Now, look, the children of Israel, when they first seen the miracles, they believe and they worship. But now look what they're saying. They're saying, I hope the most high judge you for what you did to us. I, you, you made us look bad. You, now we are abhorred in Pharaoh's eyes. I pray that see their minds. This was a good thing, but they might not. They became an enemy to Moshe. So that's what I'm saying. You have to understand the spiritual uh, uh, atmosphere and, and aptitude of what's really going on in a Ruako realm. It's not. We're just not dealing with people. We're dealing with powers. We're dealing with principalities, and we're going to get into that later on in this in this message. All right. Let's keep going. This is the covenant that the Most High made with Moshe. It says, Then Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Now shall thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am Yahuwah, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm, and with great judgment. So now it was important that uh, Yahuwah spoke this to Moshe for the task that was at hand. It was important for him to say this. He had to he had to reassure Moshe because Moshe looking like man, what what Most High, what was going on, Yahuwah? What has happened? You sent me on unto <laughs> unto Pharaoh. Now things got worse. Now the people looking at me crazy. So he had to reassure him and give him this covenant blessing. All right. So let's keep going. He also said, and I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a Elohim. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning which I did swear to give it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you for an heritage. And I am Yahuwah. And Moshe spoke and spoke these, spoke so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moshe for anguish of spirit and of cruel bondage. So here it is. Most High told Moshe to tell them these things, but they now they're in a place where they can't even believe. They don't believe because of the oppression that they're in. All right. So now these are the reasons why. The judgments are the plagues had to come. All right. 
I'm going to just go ahead and say, I'm, I may say a little bit later, but number one is because the children did not believe. The children of Israel did not believe. So the plagues had to come. So they would know this is most high redeeming them with a mighty hand. All right, I'm going to get in a little bit more detail as time goes on. All right, Aaron's rod. All right. Aaron's rod. This is Exodus 7, 10 through 12. It says, these is one of the signs. This is the, the signs. Now let's look at this. It says, and Moshe and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as Yahuwah had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. You remember, this is the first sign that, Mo, that uh, the Most High showed Moshe. And before his servants, and it became a serpent. <clears throat> but now look at this. But look what happened, though. It said, then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. But they cast down every man his rod and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Now, this is one of the, re the ways that the sorcerers opposed Moses. They concealed truth. They diverted. They, they concealed it. They hid it from sight. Because if Moshe or Aaron threw down his rod and it became a serpent, okay, that's a great power. That's a great feat. But if the magicians do the same thing, that neutralizes the faith of people. When they can when they can see a magician or a sorcerer doing the same thing uh, that that the Most High has doing uh, to his people, it neutralizes. It don't have to even be greater as, as we can as we're going to see a little bit later on. Even though Aaron's rods swallow up um, um, their rods, for some reason people don't really see that. All they see is the act that was done. So this this was one of the ways, the first initial way, how what the the um the Bible calls Janice and Jambres, how they withstood the truth. They did it with their enchantments. They did it with sorcery. They did it with magic. They did it with a power that's a was is a form of what is good, but it's denying the ruach hakodesh. And that's what we'll see in nowadays. There's coming a deception that is so strong. It's not, it's going to be people that know the word, speak the word, understand, prophesy, uh, who make miracles happen. It can it seem like it's something great. But they're doing it from a false spirit. They're doing it it's, it's, it's through sorcery enchantment. And it, like I said, as time goes further, we're going to give you certain clues to look for. I'm telling you, we <laughs> to understand these things, you know, the Most High will have to give you experience. Just like Moshe and the children of Israel, they went through an experience to know the signs to under and get understanding to also help deliver the people. That's what Moshe had to go through some things in order to help deliver. And that's where you get the power. That's where you get the anointing. It's not, I'm telling you, it's not just gifts. It's not the most high just sprinkle something on you and you be able to do just because you're able to do certain things. I'm, I, I see I'm going to have to do a teaching on the anoint, what it really means to be appointed. It's not even, it's not, even with Moshe, it wasn't a, a eloquent of speech. It was just the Most High choosing is being obedient and humble to what the Most High has called you to do and whatever he's called you to do. It's obedience. It's obedience. Great men are obedient and humble. That's what makes a great man. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how many, uh, how talented you are, how gifted you are. If you can read somebody's mail, it, that, that stuff don't matter. That stuff don't move me. I'm telling you, that stuff does not move me. I done seen some, I done seen things, I done seen all of that. That stuff, that, that, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean that the most high witch. That don't mean anything. All right, let's keep going. That's my side note. All right, let's go. First, First, um, first, uh, judgment, first plague. 
first plague was the water turned to blood. And it's Exodus 7, 20 through 22. It says, And Moshe and Aaron did so as Yahuwah commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. Now remember, like I, we're talking about Janice and James, how they withstood Moses. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But look what it says. It said, and the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as Yahuwah had said. So now look at this. Now Moshe done turned done turn the whole river of Egypt to blood. All the water he done turned to blood. But here, look, the magicians also did. They got a little bit of water and was able to pour it out or whatever, and 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 turn it into blood. And like I said, they're working by powers, and these type of things is what neutralizes. The hearts of people. It neutralizes the faith of people. It doesn't. You would think it would take a great feat, as you know. Let's say they they were able to turn the the bloody um the blood back into water, but no, they don't have to do that. All they have to do is um uh it's called to, it's just a copy. The counterfeit is a copy. All they're doing is copying what they're seeing. Uh, just and, and and on a smaller scale, and that's enough to just neutralize. If you can just seem like you're doing something, somewhat type, some type of way that the Most High is doing, it it neutralizes people. It it creates confusion. It withstands truth. It conceals truth. It distracts people. It draws people away. And these is what this is what the magicians did through their enchantments. All right. And it takes some, like I said, it takes some sort of power for them to do this. All right. Let's look at the second plague, the plague of frogs. And it says, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, say, say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt. And the frogs came up. And covered the land of Egypt, and the but, but, but wait, wait hope, and the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Okay, again, like I said, I would think, hey, what would really do it for me is if they were able to make the frogs go back into the water, or and go back into the rivers, and go back into the stream. But no, all they did was just. They just reenacted. They just carbon copied. They just copycatted off of what Moshe did and Aaron was doing. And that was enough to neutralize. That was enough to, to make people doubt. Because it's like, okay, if, if, if Elohim is doing this and they doing that, it's like, I don't, I don't, who, how, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Because we have to understand, like, in these days, it's not like how it is in these times, all right? In these times, you know, we know who the Most High is. We know that there's an Elohim in heaven and earth. Many don't believe or whatever, but there is. And we know we can kind of distinguish evil from good in a in a, in a sense of uh, that we don't, a lot of us in the Western civilization, I'll say, in a Western civ civilization, um, we don't see all the powers and the things that work. But I'm telling you, it's coming, though. It's coming. That's a side note. It is coming. But we don't see, um, really, it's here. <laughs> let, me, let me stress that. Let me change that. It's here. But we don't see, we don't We don't really, but on a, on a main scale, we don't really see um, people sacrificing to idols and these idols having power to do certain things. We don't really see the magnitude of how Israel really had had to. They were really were in a, some type of uh, dilemma where they didn't know if to believe really to believe in Elohim or not to believe in the Most High because they see these other powers working. 
just like in the day of Eliah, or Eliyahu. He said, how long are you going to be caught between two opinions? If, if by all be God, serve him. If he be Elohim, serve him. But if Yahuwah be Elohim, then serve him. And it says that the people answer him not a word. Why? Because there was so much, there was so much sorcery, so much witchcraft going on at that time that they would, they really, their minds was, was like, they didn't, I don't, man, we, I don't know. They were really confused. They were really, they really were confused. It wasn't like they, they wanted to be truly. I mean, we, well, it wasn't like they just, there was nothing going to just chose to do that. There were some things operating that they saw and it, it lured them, it seduced them into worshiping idols. See, we don't understand that. We really don't see that here. Okay, but there is coming a strong delusion and it is here and it's coming. Is he? All right. Let's keep moving. Plague three of lice. It says, And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. And Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians, look what they did, did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. But wait a minute, they could not. So there were lice upon man, upon beast. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of Elohim. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as Yahuwah had said. Now we get to the third plague, and they tried to reenact it with their enchantments. But they could not do it. And they had to confess unto Pharaoh that this is the finger of Elohim. And what they were really saying, this statement was showing that was was what they were really saying was the statements that Yahuwah is greater than our gods. I don't like using Elohim in a negative term. Our Elohim, Yahuwah, he is greater than our gods. We can't do nothing with this one. All right, let's keep going. And it says, And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the waters. This is the plague of flies. And say unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else if thou would not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground wherein they are. Okay. Now we're seeing something here. We're seeing a split happen. Because if you notice, he's saying, uh, I will send these swarm of flies, it says, unto thy servants upon thy people. He's talking about, and the houses of the Egyptians shed the swarm of flies and also the ground wherein they are okay so he started to create a split he says i was severed in that day the land of goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies be there to the end thou mayest know that i am yahuwah in the midst of the earth and i will put a division between my people and thy people tomorrow shall this sign be and Yahuwah did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarms of flies. So here it is now. Now that the that the Most High is, is starting to make His presence greater and known, and make His <laughs> and make Himself uh make His uh make his power more clear by shutting down um, shutting down the powers of Egypt. Now he's creating a, creating a split between the Egyptians and Israel. Because now, first of all, why did why couldn't he just do this to only the Egyptians first? Well, he did this so that even 
so that even Israel would believe. They had to go through the first three or four plagues because, first of all, they they denied. They 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 didn't believe. So the Most High said, "Okay, all right." So everybody had to go through that because it is we don't really reach out to the Most High until we get into times of affliction. So that's when they started, okay, that unbelief, they started believing in. So now the Most High said, okay, all right. I think I made my presence known. I think I made my point. I think I made my point clear. Now it's time for me to make a divide, a split. No longer will my people go through these things. Now this is for these heathens. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. All right. Now this is the the last plague, the, the last plague, the tenth plague of death. Uh or the plague of death. This is the tenth plague. Uh Exodus eleven, one, uh, and four through seven. It says, And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. And Moshe said, Thus saith Yahuwah, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall no, not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that Yahuwah doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So the Most High is being gracious, and he's showing the last plague, and he's and and, and look what he's doing. Um, he's made a difference, and he's hitting um. Pharaoh uh, in his own home. All right, let's keep moving. So we, I'm, we're going to break down uh, these ten plagues, and what were these ten plagues about? Yes, they were about judgment. Yes, they were about uh, the Most High showing His hand and redeeming the children of Israel. Yes, it was about getting the attention of Pharaoh t to let the people go. Yes, it was about. Uh, uh, the children uh, are the Egyptians um, coming into um, uh, understanding and, and giving all that they had away to, uh, to to Israel. But it was more than that. We're dealing with powers. If you read, I believe it's, it's in Psalms, I don't remember, 96 or something. It talks about how every nation has a, a, a God over it. Every nation has some type of entity which if you want to call it a principality that rules over those people or that nation. All right. So the most high, he was not just um, um, bringing down Pharaoh or showing his hand and doing certain things, but he was coming against 10 Egyptian gods. Like I said, I don't like using Elohim in a negative term. So it's 10 Egyptian gods. All right. So let's look at this. Let's look at the first God, his name is is Happy or Happy. It's the Egyptian god of the Nile. This is the first plague when he turned uh water into blood. Now Happy, 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 Happy. This Egyptian god was a water bearer. The first plague that was given to the Egyptians from Elohim was that of turning the water to blood. As Aaron, the spokesman for Moses, touched the rod of, of Yahuwah to the Nile River, it immediately turned to blood. All the fish died and the river stank, partially able to duplicate this miracle. Uh, the magicians of Pharaoh also turned water to blood, leaving Pharaoh unimpressed, like I said, because they were able to do what they were doing. It, it, it didn't move. Pharaoh and it didn't move the people as well. Pharaoh was unimpressed with this great wonder from Elohim. Seven days later, the water throughout all the land of Egypt remained in the state, unsuitable for drinking. The perfect length of time to, to demonstrate that Yahuwah was superior to all the other Elohims of Egypt. Like I said, 
if Hapai was greater than Yahuwah and these these um these sorcerers who and they worship this God, why were they able to um, entreat him to turn the, the water uh, uh, the uh, the blood back into water? That would have been a great feat. But like I said, they didn't really have to do that because they they can't they couldn't do that, but they could what they could do was neutralize people's belief and get people to to be diverted and to be confused. And to try to um, snuff out the truth. All right, that's all that Hasatan can do. He all he is is a manipulator, a duplicator, uh, with an um, a, a illusionist. That's all he has. An intimidator. The power that he has is through manipulation and illusions. All right. The second um, plague was against Heket, and this is the Egyptian goddess of fertility and water and renewal. So this is the Egyptian plague of frogs coming from the Nile River. Heket, the Egyptian goddess, had the head of a frog. Hmm. The second plague that was extended upon Egypt from the rod by Aaron was that of frogs. The frogs came up from the river and were in their houses, in their food, in their clothing, in every place possible, from the greatest to the least. No one in Egypt escaped the plague of frogs. Pharaoh's magicians were able to bring more frogs in their attempt to imitate the power of Elohim, but only Moshe was able to make the frogs go away. This was another attack on a famous Egyptian goddess, Heket. Again, I'm not going to be redundant, but we see how... Uh, the Most High showed his hand. The Egyptians tried to did the same thing. They was able to, um, uh, they was able to disguise or or to, <clears throat> they was able to dispose people and that people would not believe. All right. Third play was against the Egyptian goddess of the earth, which name is Jael. Okay. Three Egyptian, the third Egyptian plague was the lice from the dust of the earth. At the command of Yahuwah, Moshe, Aaron was told to stretch forth his rod and smite the dust of the earth. When he did, the dust became lice throughout all the land on both people and beasts. Finally, the magicians of Pharaoh are humiliated, being unable to compete with this power that was so much greater than themselves and the powers that they had from the Egyptian gods and goddesses, and they professed this is the thing of Elohim. Like I said, uh, or like the word says, that their their powers are what they're going to be doing will be exposed. It will be exposed. Don't worry, it'll be exposed. All right. The, um, this is the Egyptian goddess Kephri. Um, Kepri is the Egyptian god of creation, of movement, of the movement of the sun and rebirth. All right, Egyptian plague. This is the fourth one. It was the swarms of flies. But the fourth Egyptian plague, which consisted of flies, begins the great miracle of separation or differentiation. Moshe met Pharaoh at the Nile River in the morning and made the demand, speaking on behalf of Yahuwah, let my people go, that they may serve me. Again, Pharaoh hardened his heart and disregarded the request, resulting in a pronouncement of swarms of flies. This time, however, only the Egyptians are affected by the judgment or plague, and the children of Israel remain unscathed. This wonder also moves the Egyptian plagues to a different level, adding destruction as well as discomfort. To the consequences of their decisions and also look at how he's pictured he's pictured as a dung beetle he's pictured as a, a, a fly or beetle or whatever he's pictured as that so let's keep going all right this is hathor uh, this is the egyptian goddess of love and protection this is um, this is why Elohim had the fifth plague. It's the Egyptian plague of death of cattle and livestock. This plague was given with an advanced warning, allowing a period of repentance to occur, which goes unheeded. 
Most High is very graceful, isn't he? He's very gracious. Tomorrow, the hand of Yahuwah will be felt upon the cattle and livestock of only the Egyptians as grievous moraine. This means that disease and pestilence will fall upon their livestock with so severe consequence as to cause them to die. This plague affected the Egyptians by creating a huge economic disaster in areas of food, transportation, military supplies, farming, and economic goods that were produced by these livestock. Now notice the Most High with this plague, he starts to hit them uh, in their pockets with their livelihood in every way, shape, form of their lives, food, transportation. He didn't hit their water. He hit, he's hitting um, their their pro protection, no mili their military of every aspect of their lives. Now just think about it. Just the, we, we talk about uh, the dollar falling and things crashing and people going crazy. Just, just think about how we look at that. This is what was going on in the day of Egypt, in the times of, of Israel coming out of Egypt. Their whole world was turned upside down. There was despair. Just think about the despair that was going on in their lives. Think about the panic, the worry, the discouragement, the despair. I'm pretty sure everybody was looking like everybody's mother died or something. This is what was going on at that time. I'm here. To, I'm just trying to paint that picture. This is what was going on at that time. Panic, full blown panic. All right. And also, I've I've heard this. They said that this was the and I can see it. I can see how it could be true if it is true. This is this is um, the God that they said this is the God that Israel made when they came out of Egypt. You remember when uh, Moshe went up to the mountains for, for 40 days and the children of Israel was like, man, what we don't know what happened. What, what has come of uh, Moses or Moshe? What has come of him? We don't know what's happened to him. And they said they told Aaron, make us. A God, so that we may worship. We don't know what's going on here. We don't know what happened. We can't be out here all alone. The young God is out here what, to die. No, we need something. So everybody got their gold. Uh, Aaron told them to get get your gold or whatever. And they, they melted it and whatnot. And it, it says that out came this calf. But how do you, how does out just a, a calf just a, a, so happen to appear? No, it was fashion. And they needed something. They wanted protection. And we know in the secular or in, in heathenistic cultures, when they talk about love, they're really talking about lust. And the Bible says that the children of Israel got up and they rose up to play. They had parties and orgies and they felt they wanted protection while they was out there and all those different things. So I can see how this is true. All right, let's keep going. This is Isis, the Egyptian goddess of medicine and peace. Okay, let's see what's happening. This is a sixth Egyptian plague. Ashes turn to boils and sores. Unannounced, the sixth Egyptian plague is given for the first time, directly attacking the Egyptian people themselves, being instructed by Yahuwah. Moshe took ashes from the furnace of affliction and threw them into the air, as the dust from the ashes blew all over Egypt, it settled on a man, on man and beast alike in the form of boils and sores. As with the previous two, throughout the remaining Egyptian plagues, the division is drawn between the Egyptians and the children of Israel. As Elohim gives protection to his covenant people, the severity of the, Egyptian, of the judgment of Elohim has now become personal as it is actually felt by the people themselves. Cleanliness being paramount in the Egyptian society, this plague pronounces the people unclean. The magicians who have been seen throughout the previous plagues are unable to perform ceremonially rituals for their Egyptian gods and goddesses. In this unclean state, not allowing them to even stand before Pharaoh, they are seen in the scriptorial account no more. It is great to notice the contrast shown as Moshe and Aaron are the only ones left standing in front of Pharaoh with the one true Elohim as their support. Hallelujah. Okay, this is Nut, the Egyptian goddess of the sky. 
Let's look at this one. This is a seven Egyptian plague. This is hell rained down in the form of fire. Okay, again, warning is given before the enactment of the plague takes place. Pharaoh is warned of the impending doom that will be faced if he does not listen to Yahuwah. Hell of unspeakable signs and the ability to destroy would rain down from the sky and turn to fire as it hit the ground. Yahuwah, in, sh in showing Pharaoh that there is none like him in the earth, allows those who are willing to hear his voice and do, and do as he commands to be saved. A division is now felt between the Egyptians in the form of those converted to Yahuwah and as shown by their obedience and willingness to escape the protection of their houses. Similarly, we are warned to make our houses a place of res a refuge from the, from the world today. We have been warned. Interestingly enough, the crops that were destroyed by the hail consisted of flax and barley, which were ripening in the fields. This is why we, we call it Passover, and this is why uh, they harvest barley at this time. That's why this is the month of Aviv. It was when the, the barley was ready. This is what um, the, this feast day is about. All the feast days are around harvest time. Okay? If you want more information on that, I would suggest you to look at Passover Re Reveal. And um, it has some a lot of insights on on these on this. All right, so Passover is the barley harvest, uh, Shavuot is the wheat harvest, and then um, Yom Turah is uh, the harvest of different things of like grapes and fruits and um, uh, fall vegetables and things of that nature. All right, okay, so these two particular crops were not the mainstay of their diet, but were used more specifically for their clothing and libation. This destruction would make their life uncomfortable, but as for affecting their food supply, the wheat still survived. This gave the Egyptians still another chance to turn to the one true Elohim and forsake their own Egyptian gods and goddesses, thus showing his mercy and grace even yet. Hallelujah. All right. So this is Seth. This is who Elohim, or the Most High, Yahuwah, was coming against when he had the eighth plague. This is Seth, the Egyptian god of storms and disorder. Let's see how the Most High did this. He sent locusts from the sky. It says this is the second wave of destruction to follow the hell. And whatever crops were left intact after this display were now completely consumed by the swarms of locusts that were unleashed from the sky. This wonder definitely affected their life source by hitting them in their food supply. Yahuwah displayed the possibility of imminent death if a change of heart did not occur. Yet still, Pharaoh would not listen. Yes, this was um, imminent death because, first of all, the water was turned into blood, killed all the fishes, then you had the frogs, then you had pestilence, then you had your, all your livestock killed you can't move nowhere you can't go nowhere um your money's failed everything and now that you <laughs> the little bit that you did have that that you that that you had on hand hell done came burned that up locust done came burnt that up you you your health is failing i mean goodness man so just look at all these things look at what these people had to suffer all right and this would just be imminent death. After the hell and the locusts came, man, it's, it was just horrendous. All right, so let's keep going. This is the ninth plague. This is Ra, the sun god. Uh, this is the ninth Egyptian plague. It was three days of complete darkness. It says, darkness now fell upon Egypt, unannounced as a prelude to the future fate to be felt by the Egyptian empire when the message of Yahuwah was not heeded. And they still turn to their own Egyptian gods and goddesses. Three days of palpable, a palpable darkness that was so immense it could be felt physically or physically felt covered the land of Egypt. The sun, the most worshipped god in Egypt other than Pharaoh himself, gave no light. Yahuwah showed that he had control over the sun as a witness that the Elohim of Israel had ultimate power over life and death. 
the psychological and religious impact would have had a profound influence on the Egyptians at this point. Darkness was as a representation of death, judgment, and hopelessness. Darkness was a complete absence of light. Hallelujah. So let's look at the last plague. It was against Pharaoh himself, the ultimate power of Egypt. This was the 10th plague of the death of the firstborn. And it says that Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was worshipped by the Egyptians because he was considered to be the great Egyptian god of all. It was believed that he was actually the son of Ra himself manifested in the flesh. Since virtually all the Egyptian animals had been consumed by the judgment of Yahuwah, Pharaoh now consented to the request made to let the people go. <clears throat> but they must leave their animals behind. This was a totally unacceptable offer as the animals were to be used as the actual sacrifice to Yahuwah. Yahuwah is uncompromising when he has set his terms. Enraged by the refusal, by the refusal, Pharaoh pronounced the last deadly plague to be unleashed upon the land from his own lips as he warns Moshe, get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. So he, he tried to pronounce a curse upon Moshe, but it backfired, it came upon him because the Most High said he would bless those that bless you. And he would curse those that curse you. So it was it was turned back on upon his own head. And as him being Pharaoh, it turned not upon his own head, but all those that was under him, which were the children of Israel. Hallelujah. And says so at this point, the passive obedience that the children of Israel have shown is now moved to a level of active obedience. That's what we need. That's why it's important to understand laws, statutes, commandments, and not just the, the, the letter of the law, but actual the essence, um, the principles of the laws of not just what to do. Those are just things to do at that very time period. There was, but the Most High has a heart, the heart of the law and principles that we can apply even into our lives, even into this day, and to get understanding, to draw a, a shadow type of things yet to come and yet to be revealed even spiritually. All right? So, and we see that, like I said, if you want to see some, some of those things, look at Pastor Re Reveal. It's a, it's a beautiful message. It says, they are given strict instructions to follow so that they do not also feel the judgment of this last plague sent by Yahuwah. These instructions are known as the Feast of Pesach, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the Law of the Firstborn. Uh, in these rituals are displayed the Law of Sacrifice, the Law of uh, the Good News, and the Law of Consecration all necessary requirements to receive ultimate salvation from spiritual death. Like I said, if you want to see uh, what the what Pesach is, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, and also uh, the Law of the Firstborn, which is called uh, in Hebrew, Yom HaBikarim, uh, they were shadow types um, of what Yahushua actually did when he came up on this earth. And it's beautiful, very revelatory. I suggest you look at that if you haven't already. All right. So now, this is um, this is the message. Like I said, it's not nothing too too deep, but I, I I pray that you got something from this message to understand that we're not just dealing with people. We're just not dealing with something that's natural. There is a rockal realm. And there's certain things that we have to address in that realm. Hallelujah. There's certain things we have to get an understanding and have to spend time uh, with the Most High that he may, may address certain things within us, certain things that are around us, 
and to learn the necessary tools that it takes to, to, to come against the enemy. You can have a weapon. I can have a, 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 a AK-47. I can have a um, AR-15. I can, I can have the weapon. But if I don't know how to use it, I am not properly trained on how to put in the, um, the ammo to do certain things, I'm going to be ineffective and the enemy will be able to come into my life, into my home naturally and do whatever he wants to. So that's what I'm saying. Even spiritually, we have to spend time learning what we have, cultivating, uh, using it. Prayer is a weapon. Fasting is a weapon. Prayer points are like bullets. They're like arrows. We need to know what target. We need to know what ammo to have for what for what um what comes ahead of, of us. There's certain even in hunting. There's certain ammunition that you use for certain beasts. We need to know what we're dealing with and what to use to attack and to annihilate the enemy. And also, we we don't have just a, a dummy. This, this the enemy that we have. He 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 hits back. All right. Wrestling requires your whole body in movement, in motion. It's a wrestle. All right. So we need have to have understanding of these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let me let me pray. Father, we just bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up, Father. Father, I pray that this message, Father, has been a blessing to your people to uplift, to awaken, to arise, to restore uh, sight, Father, to give insight right now, Father, and to, Father, right now, uh, the plots and the plan of the enemy, Father, to expose right now what the enemy has done and is trying to do, Father. You said that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but you came to give life and life more abundantly, and that you said that you are the light. Right now, Father, we pray that you be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray, Father, once you said that when the enemy is exposed, he has to render unto us sevenfold what he has stolen, Father. Right now, Father, I pray right now a blessing upon everyone uh, who hears this message, Father. I pray right now, Father, that you go into that into their into their homes, that you go into the corridors, Father, even, even their, their mental capacity, their ruach, Father, and their minds right now, Father, and begin begin to open their eyes, even as Shaul prayed. I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know the glorious inheritance which is in the in the saints, that you may know uh that you may know Yahusha Hamashiach, that you may know him, that you may know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We just bless you. We praise you, Father. We magnify you. We thank you, Father. We honor you right now, Father. And right now, Father, we come against every spirit of deception, Father. We come against, Father, every stronghold of deception, mental bondage, Father. Physical, Father, right now. Mental, emotional deception, Father. We come against every lie of the enemy right now, Father, because you know that Hasatan is a lie, is the father of all lies, and the truth is not in him right now, Father. And I pray that this truth that has been exposed right now, Father, will render the enemy powerless because you said you've given us power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and by no means nothing shall harm us. We just bless you, Father. We thank you for your enlightening word, Father. We thank you for your wisdom and your power and your Ruach HaKodesh, Father, that resides in us, Father. We pray, Father, that we be, Father, that our ears right now, Father, will be sensitive, sensitive to hear what you have to say unto us, Father. That our eyes, Father, right now may be fastened on, upon you right now, Father. We may seek you first in your kingdom and your righteousness, Father. And everything that we have, Father, everything that we desire will be added unto us, Father. And I pray, Father, that your, that your people do not get weary in well-doing, but that they strive, they strive right now, Father, lawfully to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Yahushua HaMashiach. Father, bless us that you may give us, Father, meekness, humble, and to be patient, that we may reap a hundredfold right now, Father. 
So we just bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. And we lift you up, Father. And we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Yahushua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be unto your most holy name. So if you want to contact us, hallelujah. If you would like to contact us, you can do so by um, <clears throat> email. We are the Great Awakening Assembly of the Most High. We are here to awaken, uh, awakening Yah's chosen people. I am your Moray, Moray Eliyahu, Malak Ben Yehuda, along with my with my wife, Rena Esther by Yehuda. All right. And our email is tga.assembly12 at gmail.com. Um, our YouTube page, you can find it if you type in TGA Assembly. Uh, you will see a logo that's similar to this will appear. Um, and as far as the Facebook, Facebook has not a, a, has taken down our page. Uh, and they won't let me put up another one. They won't let us put up another one. So uh, for right now, and maybe permanently, uh, there is no Facebook page. But um, I got to tell you, you know, the, the Most High is still working. The Most High is still working. And if you want, um, if you want any of the prayer points, I will put up certain prayer points uh, concerning, like I said, dreams dream interpretations, um, spiritual warfare, prayer points, things of that nature. I will put those things up concerning um, witchcraft. Like I said, if you have any any uh, suggestions, if you need anything, uh, be sure to email us. And the website, uh, I you have to put the whole thing, https colon forward slash forward slash tgaassembly12 dot wixsite dot com forward slash awake um sometimes it works when you just put www dot this um for some for me most of the time that doesn't work so i put this whole thing in and um like i said i i thanks i thank everyone told out to everyone who has given who has been given or who has been giving it is much 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 appreciated I cannot stress that enough. We thank the most high for you. We pray for you all. We continue, we have you in our hearts and minds and in our prayers. And we thank you. We truly thank you. So we just bless you. We praise you. We pray that the most high space shines upon you right now. And we just bless you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is your more Eliyahu Malak Ben Yehuda. And all praises to the Most High Yah. May the Most High bless you. And I bid you shalom and peace. In Yahushua's name.